This video is brought to you today by Videoblocks.com. Videoblocks is an affordable subscription-based stock media site that gives you unlimited access to premium stock footage. Hey guys, welcome back to another IndieTips.com tutorial here on Ugly McGregor. Well, is it really a tutorial today? We're going to be doing something a little new. It's a bit of a discussion mixed in with some tips on how to make your own title sequence or title card. Anyone who has ever watched a TV show or a film will know of at least one title sequence. If I play this one second sound clip, I'm sure the majority of you will know where it's from. That's right, The Simpsons. And that was just a one second soundbite. You see, a title sequence isn't just an intro to a TV show or a film. They're an opportunity to set the tone of the story to come. They can reinforce brand identity and give instant recognition. The end section of Mad Men's title sequence has now become its signature logo and in turn has influenced popular culture with a series of imitations. A title sequence is an important moment for the show or film. The movie starts and you have your chance to say something. You get to invite your audience into the fictional world on screen. As the only true moment of mystery a show or film has is at the very start before we've seen the first frame. This is an opportunity to really get the audience in and ready for the story. So the question remains, as an independent and DIY filmmaker, do you need a title sequence for your short film or web series or whatever it may be? If you have a short film which is around 15 minutes or under, you only really have a limited amount of time to tell the story you want. Audiences can comprehend that a short film isn't going to provide deep character depth or an immersive story. Suffice to say, your viewer is going to want the quick fix of entertainment, then move on to the next short film or episode they may be watching in the web series. Anything over 30 seconds, and you're going to start to lose your audience. A title sequence is essentially a movie inside of a movie, but you don't have a paying customer. If you want to work with a title sequence, you're going to have to work quick. In recent years, especially within TV, as TV has moved into the so-called golden age of TV, Title sequences have often been replaced with a title card. A title card lasts no longer than 10 seconds, and we are greeted with the show's logo, a brief sound clip, and then the show starts. This in essence allows for a longer airing of the show. A common device for the title card has been to design the logo around the TV show's current narrative theme within that season. Although this isn't unique to TV, it just happens more on the small screen. Now, there are three ways that we can make our title sequence or title card. One, you have the plain text animation. Two, the sequence montage. And three, the 3D logo reveal. Now, we're going to cover two of the three aspects, the plain text animation and the sequence montage. Let's have a quick look at how we can achieve a desired effect of a great plain text animation for a title card. So first of all, let's create our show. Let's say our show is a murder mystery. It's centered on a town situated near a big lake and people keep going missing around this lake. It's all, the entire show is kind of crafted around this lake. Um, there's, you know, the bodies can't be found, things just aren't adding up. They've called in uh, federal uh, state officers and the town people are a bit weird. And you know, there's again, there's something about that lake and we're gonna call this show um, Depth. And uh, okay, that sounds pretty cool. Okay, so we're gonna open a new composition for six seconds long because that's all we want this title card to be, six, eight seconds, say. We're gonna put our text on, our predetermined font. And a bit further on in this tutorial, we're gonna start speaking about symbolism and how everything can be deconstructed, which will ultimately give your medium more meaning so essentially what i want to do here with the title sequence is i, I just don't want it to appear as depth and, and and that's kind of it we're going to make it as if this is uh this is one of the bodies that goes missing right so this is one of the bodies that goes missing within this lake or you know, whatever happens and we're going to have the, the the title appear as if it's a body rising to the surface of this lake but like i said None of the bodies are ever found and, and it's, it's all shrouded in mystery. So first we're just going to turn the text to 3D by clicking this. Now, I don't know if you've ever noticed, but in films, adverts, uh, TV intros say, whenever the text is pushed back in C-space, when it moves forward, 
And the individual characters, the letters, they disperse within the width of one another. Now you do this by clicking this little triangle by here and clicking tracking. Now if you go down to the tracking amount, when you adjust that, the letters, the characters are going to move away from each other. Now if we set a keyframe when the text is pushed back and we're going to bring the text forward and put another keyframe there and we're going to disperse the letters a little bit. So now when it comes forward, it's going to give that kind of classic TV advert, TV intro, film trailer text look. There's something aesthetically pleasing about seeing the characters individually move apart as it comes forward. So next I have this ripple layer, which I downloaded from video blocks and it's kind of, um, I think it's supposed to be mimicking a lake. I think it looks like a pre-rendered visual uh, of a ripple rather than an actual filmed lake. Now we're going to place this underneath our text layer and in the effects panel, we're going to search for a displacement map. Now what a displacement map is essentially in layman terms, it's going to take the, it's going to take the movement of the chosen layer and give those qualities to the affected layer. So here I'm just going to adjust the distortion for the vertical and the, the horizontal properties, as well as change where it's taking its information from. I'm going to choose luminance instead of a color property. So if I turn the ripple layer off now and just play back this text, it starts to look a little bit like water. Now, what happens when something's in the water? The deeper it goes, the more blurrier it gets, it's, it's going to get because of the diffraction. So we're just going to have an adjustment layer here and add on some blur. And again, as the item, say, we'll say as the body, the text, as it rises to the surface, as there's more light available, it's going to become less blurry. So I'm just going to add some keyframes here and adjust the blurriness for when it rises to the surface, it's going to be a lot more, uh, a lot less blurry, sorry. And now I'm going to also add a, a mesh warp and a mesh warp is essentially, it adds a grid to your composition and you can adjust the displacement and distort essentially everything underneath the adjustment layer. And again, I'm going to set a keyframe and I'm going to kind of make it look as if it's running through, as if it's traveling through water. We're going to give it more of a, of a stream type feel. So let's have a look at this now. Okay. Now that's looking pretty good. And for our final effect, we're going to add a light layer. As I said earlier, the deeper something is, there's less light. So we're going to have it come into the light and as it reaches the surface, Theoretically, you should be able to see it properly, but in this murder mystery show, the bodies, they disappear, they don't come back out of the lake or whatever. So it's going to come to the surface again, it's going to disappear. All about symbolism and themes that we're going to try and incorporate into this, as that's what our show is about. And finally, it looks something like this. It looks, it looks pretty good. It looks kind of like a, it's kind of got like a lost feel to it. All right, so back onto the theory. The most popular way of working with a title sequence is to use a montage of shots. If you're working towards a web series, which runs for around about 15 minutes, then I think a 25 second title sequence may help establish your show's identity. Montage title sequences often work best when you don't have a direct relation to the show itself. What do I mean by that? Well, let's have a look at these two montage title sequences. True Blood and The Walking Dead. Now what can we note that are absent from their title sequences? If you notice, there's hardly any focus on the actors who star in the series. Actual locations which are used in day-to-day -day scenes are quite absent. In fact, a lot of things from the actual series is missing. Instead, we are presented with a series of symbols and themes that will be present throughout the series or film. As mentioned before, a title sequence is essentially a movie within a movie. You can connect your audience to a medium on a completely different level. If you studied media or you're studying media within school, you will often deconstruct sequences like this. So let's take 10 seconds from True Blood and let's see what we can learn from the series from just 10 seconds of the title sequence. Okay, I got this information from the following frames. It looks like we're going to be in rural America. There's a heightened sex sequence with film nudity. Let's me know that this is going to be an adult series and two, sex is going to be involved within the series. The theme of religion is present, which is juxtaposed to a rundown liquor bar. So does this say that the characters in this series see religion as a rundown thing? Is, is it something people turn to when everything else has failed? 
Then we have a civilian being carted away by the police. He seems to be outnumbered, six to one. So are the main characters going to be outnumbered by the bad guys? Or does this say to us that the establishment will not protect you? From what looks to be the same film role, we have a number of white middle-aged men looking at us. The audience as outsiders, or as if we're not welcome. It offers the question as who isn't welcome in this series? The period of this film stock looks like it might be from the civil rights area, a period of time where those who were from a different race fought for equality. Presumably, one would know that this show is about vampires. So does this implication suggest that vampires are fighting for their rights? We quickly see a glance of a few gravestones, which is a very direct symbol of death. And finally, we are brought back to another clip of sexual associations, which reinforces the notion that sex is going to be a big part of this series. Yes, this is an adult show. So if we have a look at the actual style of the sequence, it's been... It's, it looks like it's been shot as if it was on an 8mm film camera, which is a dated tool. Does this suggest that the geographical look, uh, setting for the show is old-fashioned? Are the people dated, the buildings, trees, and the vehicles also give us an inkling that the show is set in the southern part of the United States? And of course, the music which is playing over the top reinforces the geographical location, as well as reinforcing the symbols that we have just deconstructed. So all of this was from... 10 seconds worth of a title sequence. Is some of it reaching? Sure, but that's the whole point. The audience is given respectable media to look at and analyze. So how do we create a sequence like this? Let's match the 10 second time scale of True Blood's title sequence that we analyzed. And we're gonna do that for our murder mystery. So first off, we're gonna need footage and lots of it, random, old, literally, macro aerial kind of anything and everything which is going to help us have a wide library of things that we can use for our sequence now do you have access to this types of footage uh, we're going to be going with the depth murder mystery program i already have a lot of abstract underwater work from my abstract underwater video that you may have seen on my channel now for everything else there's video blocks now video blocks is this episode sponsor and luckily, they tie in with the discussion. Now, often I turn down sponsorships because they don't relate to my videos and I don't want to enforce stuff on people, but this works. So what is Videoblox? If you didn't know, it's a subscription-based stock media site that gives you access to unlimited stock footage. I mean, literally, $99 a year, 100,000 clips to use in your project. So our murder mystery program takes place around a lake. Uh, we're going to look, obviously, for some lake footage. Now, we are presented with a wide variety of things, and I like that. That is really nice. I'm just going to download this one. And this is also called my eye. If you just scroll over the thumbnail, it gives you a short video preview. Okay, that's also pretty cool, too. I'm just going to download that, too. So, And essentially, anything that you download is yours to keep, even if you cancel your subscription or, you know, it's, it's yours, uh, commercially, privately, use it in school, use it for your short film, whatever it may be. It's kind of a tool that you should have um, because let's just say now, obviously the police are in this fake program we talked about. Um, and let's just say it's an American show. I don't have access. I can't go out onto the street and, and film some American car, police cars or American police officers. Um, I'm going to take that. So it's really great for things that you don't have access to. Um, what else are we going to look at? Let's look at some omens of death. Ooh, okay, what about a crow? That's a good omen of death. Ah, there we go. Some crows eating a dead hare in the snow. We can probably make that look like it's going to be a dead body or something because these title sequences, the shots, the individual shots within a title sequence, they usually only last for a couple of seconds, if not a second at most. Um, crow on a stump, we're going to use this. Literally, there's everything to choose from. Aerial shots, international locations, US locations, macro shots, time lapses. In fact, we can probably have a look. Um, time lapse. I think a good time lapse would be good. Um, time lapse forest. There we go, that works great for what we're doing. I mean, the thing is, these type of shots, they're going to cost you like $2,000 to download anywhere else. And possibly more to do it yourself. 
know, I think at first I was kind of hesitant to use these type of shots because I guess everyone, you know, there's been 672 people that have downloaded this shot. And you might think, well, it's going to appear in my film, it can appear in their film. But then don't forget we have this amazing tutorial from Andrew Kramer, which allows you to make 3D set extensions off stock footage. So you can essentially turn what is already pre-made footage into something completely new. So the possibilities are endless. Okay, so all that is downloaded. Now I'm about to enter a super fast time lapse to speed up the editing program. Okay, so let's have a look of the proposed 10 seconds, which may have been something from a, a 30 second title sequence that we just made. Okay, cool, that can work. That was from around about two hours work. Now I'm not gonna go through this sequence to see what information is hidden within there. You can do that and let me know what you think below. Remember, a title sequence isn't just to let the audience know who is in your film. They will know that when they watch the film or the TV show themselves. The sequence is a moment of prosperity where you can invite your audience into a foreign world and you're gonna to want to make sure that their first experience in being there is gonna be amazing. Now for the third option, we have the 3D logo. And as I mentioned before, we're not necessarily going to go into a tutorial on how to make your own. 3D animation isn't necessarily my strongest point and I think there are other educators online per se that can do a better job. There will be links in the description below. Now the 3D logo is often in lieu of the title sequence and the plain text animation. In recent years, television networks have had a lot of fun with 3D intros when an episode has had a certain theme. For example, this is Arrow's usual reveal. Then in season three, there's a copycat archer who calls herself Cupid. So the reveal was this. So there we have it, a few different ways of making a title sequence slash title card, some history and some theory. I hope you have enjoyed today's lesson. And remember our episode sponsor video blocks that a seven day free trial. You can download up to 140 clips from the library during this trial. And this automatically rolls into a monthly plan after the trial ends. So don't forget, you can just cancel and keep these clips if you want to. Until next time. <laughs>